a new season is arriving. So for those of us who are drawn to the wild woman archetype as a teacher, a friend, a mentor, the turning of the seasons is a major event because we look to the natural world as a spiritual teacher, as a place where we can uh, discern wisdom. So wild women and the autumn equinox is what I'm going to be discussing today. And we're going to kind of look into the wild woman archetype, what stirs and motivates her. We're going to look at what the autumn equinox embodies and could possibly teach us. And then we're going to end with a little bit of a practice. So I want to encourage you at this point, if you can sit near a window or outside somewhere, feel free to travel with me um, and, and just know that as I speak, I hope that you're breathing inward and tuning inward to see how and where what I'm saying is landing for you. And then if you are able to be where, you know, the natural world is in sight, such as, you know, on your front stoop, then you can also pay good attention to how the natural world is playing with your experience. So first of all, let's talk about the wild woman archetype. So we have the language, the wild woman archetype, because of Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes, who wrote Women Who Run With the Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Archetype. Now, Dr. Estes is a senior Jungian analyst, hence the archetype, and she's also a cantadora who is the keeper of old stories. So in that revolutionary book, which was published in the early 90s and, and really was deeply popular and extremely influential in the world of feminine spirituality, spirituality for women, which was really important because the religions, the primary religions of the last few thousand years have been centered around men and male uh, characters. So Dr. Estes offered these old stories from cultures around the world and introduced the wild woman archetype. And there is such and is such a deep hunger to see ourselves and feel the particularity of our themes as women be portrayed through a spiritual mythic lens. Uh, so anytime you hear the phrase wild woman archetype, please remember Dr. Estes, please, you know, read her book women who run with the wolves. So I read this book in 2011 and then in 2012 officially launched the Wild Woman Project. And one of the central aims of a few central aims is a want and a desire to bring the Wild Woman archetype to life in ourselves, in our communities and in the world. So what is an archetype? An archetype is a set of patterns that we can see in plays and myths and on the world stage and even in our family dynamics. Uh, so there are so there are uh, in I don't know if it's infinite amount of archetypes, but there are a lot of archetypes you can think of the fool, the queen, the seer, the poet, the maiden, the hunter. OK, we can go on and on and on and each archetype offers us a window or a kind of portal to access wisdom, energy, patterns that are beyond our personal self. So for those of us who are walking with, turning toward the wild woman archetype, we are sort of looking at 
what does this open up in us? So the wild woman archetype has so much to offer and teach us, and I think is extremely timely for many reasons. Um, and central to that is the wild woman is connected to the natural world deeply in an embodied sense. The wild woman archetype, when we walk with her, encourages us to be outside, to smell the mud, to when a new season arrives, feel it, turn toward it, notice what's happening in the animal kingdom, in the plant world, to notice how it feels and, and what it does to our inner life. So the wild woman archetype has so much to teach us about being in our bodies. When we're in our bodies, then we can experience the natural world in all of its variation, complexity, dynamism, to experience all of its gifts um, and all of its teachings. The wild woman archetype encourages us to really hone intuition. Now, intuition in modern times has been, uh, for a number of reasons, pushed underground, denigrated, who cares about that? That's just some woo woo stuff. Uh, that's of no value. That's like at its best when it's denigrated, you know, at its worst, um, the witch trials where women were persecuted and burnt alive in front of their communities uh, for feeling and sensing inward. So that's at you know the extreme worst. So we are, as modern women, as modern human beings in modern times, uh, those of us called to the wild woman archetype are sort of carefully unearthing our own intuition and kind of dusting off these uh, misperceptions about what intuition is. And we're, you know, asked to hone discernment because intuition can also go weird. Anything an extreme can go weird, you know? I think with, with intuition, there is the process that Dr. Estes talks about in Women Who Run With The Wolves, which is the learning to, to sort the this from that. So very often we're asked actually, and it's important to use both our intuition and our logic. So valuing the scientific method and valuing the mystery of instinct, right? And instead of thinking, putting one over the other, all we're doing is because we're living, you know, in a scientific, hyper-rational, hyper-logical uh, culture. And all that we're doing here with honing into the wild woman archetype is taking the instinctual, the intuition, the mystic, the mystery, and we're just putting it into balance with these other really important forces in our world so that we're not uh, walking around lopsided. You know, uh, because as Dr. Estes puts forward in this book, and as so many of us have just experienced from our own life experience, you can't always reason your way forward on your life path. Sometimes you're going to make calculations based on where your heart is drawn, even though, gosh, if I put it all out on a list over here, the rational thing to do would be this but I have a sense that I need to walk this way. I don't exactly know why, but I trust it. So we thank the wild woman archetype for continuing to uh, teach us and entice us to, in a sense, balance out. Another great gift of the wild woman archetype, which we talk about pretty extensively in our circle leader training program, is the fact that uh, different than some of the other feminine or female archetypes um, and goddesses from different traditions and places around the world, the 
the wild woman archetype really strongly represents a balance between the masculine principle and the feminine principle, the solar and the yin, the part of self that does takes action and the part of self that bees and is present doing being sun moon um the Taoist perspective would be yang yin right so the wild woman archetype is constantly in a dance of balance between these two energies these two forces within so I want to turn towards this change of the seasons. And there's a sense with the wild woman archetype, she's like got her hands at our backs and we just open our arms to the new season. And we say, what is here? And the second we start doing that, we start to notice the shifts in temperature, the quality and humidity in the air, the colors in the plant world, the um, shifts in what the birds are doing and at what times they're doing what they're doing and, and the creatures. And I want to be sensitive here to those of you who live in the kind of climate where there's not a lot of variation. In those cases, you'll have to get a lot more subtle, pay closer attention to the subtleties of what's going on with the plants. And then you might also just sense your inner cycles. So we are of the natural world. Like the earth is our mother. All of these many years of evolution have brought us here as we are in this human form. So just feeling into our own inner cycles and feelings can give us a little bit of a window as well. If you were to compare the cycle of the earth and sun to the cycle of the moon and earth, the autumn equinox is kin to the waning quarter moon. So that part of the moon cycle exactly between the full moon and the new moon illuminated exactly half. You can sort of use that as uh, as a visual for the feel of the equinoxes and and specifically the feel of the autumn equinox. So if nature is the spiritual teacher. What is nature teaching us here. That's a question to walk with. I'm going to just like riff on a couple of things that come to mind for me, but. A question like that, if nature is a spiritual teacher, what is the teaching here? That's a contemplative question that you can tune into in a number of different ways. You can meditate about it. You can take the question on a walk. You can journal with it. You can breathe with it. You can reason about it. You can do a lot of different things. So, but yeah, the, the idea is don't get too obsessed with having a firm answer, but get excited about the kind of attempt to feel into and tune into the answer of the question, you know? And it's like that, um, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, right? So, uh, if nature is our spiritual teacher, what is nature teaching us at the autumn equinox? One of my first thoughts is, you know, we're kind of, we, we human beings kind of get obsessed about a lot of things and I can only speak to sort of modern Western culture, but 
you know, I sort of scoff at these attempts at perfect balance, you know, the perfect work life balance or whatever, like everybody finding um, the pursuit of balance in our lives as yet another thing that we get stressed about, you know, and Nature is modeling that in a journey of, you know, roughly 365 days in a year that two of those days, there is the um, achievement of this great balance, you know, and then poof, it's gone. <laughs> you know, so I think that that's a really like right off the bat. It's a reality check about how like moment to moment we may not be able to balance whatever is the this and the that in our life that we're trying to balance. And that's another phrase from um, women who run with the wolves, the, the, the sorting of the this and the that. But like you might ask yourself um, at Equinox, is there something in my life that I'm trying to balance, you know? Things that come up, for instance, are, you know, the balance between work and taking care of one's body. That can sometimes be hard to balance, right? And you may not, you may, you may be able to achieve perfect balance between those two things in any given day. Or you might be able to achieve a pretty good balance in any given week or any given month or any given season or any given year. So we can remember that it's very rare in the natural world for there to be perfect balance. So we can just like let go of the rigidity a little bit. And also remember that the days around the equinox, right, are balanced-ish. Right. And the further they get in either direction toward winter or back towards summer, you know, the less balance they get until they get to like that full uh, solstice energy where, you know, in the winter solstice, it's the darkest day of the year. So the night has has um, taken over the day <laughs> and the opposite is true of the summer solstice. But at this time of year. Perhaps nature is offering us a little just like natural balance in nature's um, embodiment of being balanced ish around this time. It's a good time for us to see and play with the idea of balance. The idea of balance so at this particular time I really hope that you'll walk with another question, which is, what am I balancing right now? It might be that you're balancing, okay, caring for others and caring for self. Tending to the inner world, tending to the outer world. It might be something so extremely specific to your life I couldn't possibly name. So on this equinox, perhaps calling on the wild woman archetype to be a source of inspiration and mentorship. What are you balancing right now? This season, what are you looking to balance? So one of the hallmarks of the wild woman archetype is her extraordinary creativity. It's just like, like a forest for creativity. So our lives can be viewed as these bustling, messy, colorful, extraordinary, um, creative art projects, <laughs> you know? And so being intentional with the inner space, like, really asking oneself, okay, this season, how am I going to balance caring for those that I love, those that it is my responsibility to caretake, 
and caretaking myself also my responsibility. How am I going to do that? And just to be in the question again, not too obsessed with the answer, but perhaps that's a that's that balance of whatever is your this and that is something that you can walk with in this season as a form of playing with the natural world and playing with the wild woman archetype and really stepping into your agency as a creatrix in the ongoing, messy, amazing creative project that is your, as Mary Oliver would say, one wild and precious life. So if you have your this and that, the thing you're balancing, I'd love to offer you this little practice. It's an embodied practice. So we're going to use our physical body. Um, so I'm just going to introduce it briefly here and then you can take it and run. Okay. So you can, uh, I'm going to offer it sitting, but I want you to know there are variations of this where you can take it on a walk. You can dance with this practice, but I'm going to offer it sitting just because that's simple. Starting with simplicity, I think is a good thing. And you can add your own complexity as you see fit. So you're going to take two objects of any kind, two some things to rep your, represent your this and your that. So I'm going to continue the caretaking metaphor, right? So this stone representing caretaking the people I love and being there for the people that I love, right? That's my this. And my that is being there for myself, taking really good care of myself. So you find two objects and you put them in your hands and let it be like, let the objects like to, for whatever reason, and I won't get into it, but these two stones really embody those, that for me. Okay. So you can find anything. It doesn't have to be a stone. It could be two leaves. It could be a children's toy <laughs> like it doesn't it doesn't matter um, so long as it represents to you and you can really ask yourself now like where are you in your balance so maybe you know the heaviest would be the one that you're really like i'm very tuned into this right and this season i'm in a question on how i can tune into that not to eradicate this, but to find a balancing point, because perhaps in the balance, there's some lightness that comes. There's some more ease that comes because I'm not lopsided. Okay, so you ask that for yourself and then you sit for three minutes, for seven minutes, for 21 minutes if you're like an experienced meditator with your eyes closed and really tune in to the feeling and the question, how might I bring these into balance? And you breathe well and you see what comes. Tuning into instinct and your contemplative capacities how might I bring my this and my that into balance so that I can do as nature is doing right now, getting balanced-ish, <laughs> okay? So that's the practice. And you can set a little timer on your phone um, or if you just are super spacious, you don't even have to do that. If you like a walking meditation or you'd like to take this outside, you can do the same thing walking your feet on the ground. If the temperature is right and the terrain is right for you, you can walk barefoot, connecting more deeply to Mother Earth and really bring in your sensory experience. Let the natural world be really a part of your um, contemplative activity here, your practice here. And if you are a dancer, if you like to dance, you could just play with putting on like a favorite song and see if you can dance with the question, see if moving your body, the body knows, the body is very, very wise. Moving our bodies can often stir 
realizations or open things that would otherwise stay closed. So you can sit, you can walk, you can dance, but the idea is tuning in, how's the balance in this moment? And asking the question, how might I bring it to a balanced dish state and see what comes. And whenever you get your answer, I'm gonna put these down, write it in your journal. And if there's one thing that comes, okay. So I know that in, you know, this example, and the caretaking, let's say you're caretaking um, an elderly um, parent or grandparent or an elder in your community. Okay, so I know that between this and this hour, they're usually asleep. So what am I gonna do? Maybe I'm going to take that course I wanna take or enjoy a cup of tea outside. Or maybe I'm gonna pray, or maybe I'm gonna paint. Or maybe I'm going to write, or maybe I'm going to get on the phone with someone I love who um, just talking to them helps me feel great. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. And when, once you have your answer or answers, write them in your journal. And there you have a seasonal practice for yourself. You know what you can be tending to, to take care, to take balance. And you can do your this and that practice, you know, any old time you want to. You can put the two objects, whatever they are, maybe on your altar or in a, on your nightstand, like somewhere you're going to see them a lot. So you're reminded, how am I doing with a this and that? And please be nice to yourself. Like, don't stress. Most of us are out of balance most of the time, okay? So this is just a fun practice and perhaps as we work it we learn something about the rhythms of balance you know just reiterating like maybe you're not going to necessarily get a perfectly balanced day or a perfectly balanced week but maybe in the course of the the moon cycle or the month or your menstrual cycle you can find some balance with that okay Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. <laughs> this was fun. I haven't done a video in like a year uh, for you. And I um, am really grateful if you've made it this far, that you've made it this far. And I wanna tell you also, if you are feeling called into deeper relationship with the wild woman archetype and you wanna go further with it, that if for you like, doing some education would be nourishing to your life, bringing a little magic into your life. I would love for you to join me for Wild Woman Project Circle Leader Training. It starts on October 16th. It's seven weeks long. It's all online. It's um, in its 12th year of life. Like this program existed before the Wild Woman Project. And in it, we really, really go a lot deeper into the wild woman archetype. We go into cyclical uh, way of living and viewing things. We go into how to create a potent theme in a circle and a meditation and how to create sacred space for others and for ourselves. We talk about what are the hallmarks of a form of leadership that honors the wild feminine, which is very different than a lot of um, the leadership that we, have, we see modeled in our world today. So I'll put a link below this video. I'd love to have you if it resonates. So I'm wishing you a uh, balanced-ish <laughs> autumn equinox and uh, much magic as autumn pours forward. It offers so much, so many gifts and the wildish witchy among us. It's a it's like a playground for us. <laughs> so please enjoy it. And if you ever want more information, you want to go deeper, we offer a lot of different offerings. You can go to thewildwomanproject.com. 
Oh.